In this picture, there are a lot of guys around the ball, which means they probably had proper run fits on this play. That didn't happen a lot Sunday, which is one of the reasons we gave up 160 some odd yards to Nick Chubb. So in this video, we're going to get the reasons why we didn't properly run fit. Well, not necessarily the reasons, but give you examples of not properly run fit. Uh, Sit the tally, Ravens Roundup, week four with Coach. Coming through your screen right now. So here we gonna talk about run fits. You saw the definition or the description of what run fits are, and we're gonna talk about the run fits from four um integral plays from, from Sunday. And let's see how we did not fit properly. All right, let's get it started. This first run play here is um, a little early in the game. It's a run by Nick Chubb. And let me show you how this works. We're going to count the gaps. Once everybody gets set, we're going to count the gaps. So now the guys are set. So you got, matter of fact, I'm going to make my mouse bigger real quick. One second, because I know some people can't see it. Make my mouse bigger. And if you're looking, this is your little tutorial of how to make your mouse bigger for people on the Mac. Two videos in one. All right, there we go. Um, so you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need so we need seven people to account for seven gaps. Do we have that? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And what's gonna happen on this play is it kind of looks like you have two people out here in this outside gap. But what's going to happen is Judon is going to stunt all the way to this B gap. So you got Peanut got C. Judon is going to stunt to, well, this is A. Peanut is going to stunt to this A. And then I think this is Wormley that has the B. On this side over here, we have, um, who's name it? McPhee. McPhee has out this outside gap, which is outside the tight end. Um, Peanut, not Peanut, this, um, Tony has the C gap, and I can't tell who this is. I think this is Pierce. Pierce has this A gap. The funny thing is, where should Young fit? Because like I told you, Judon's going to stunt to this gap. Pierce has this gap. Who has this B gap? And Pierce may go to the B gap, and, and Young may have here. But let's, let's play it and see what happens. So, as I said, Judon stunning here, so we got this gap taken care of, got B gap taken care of, got C gap taken care of. Um, so now we basically got two guys in the A gap. Two guys in the front side A gap because he's getting blocked. Pierce is on the ground. Nobody in this B gap. Pernell should be outside this guy. Um, and who is 34? I can't tell what 34 is. Should be outside. So we we this is the first missed fit right here. We have nobody in B gap. And look at this big crease that uh, Chubb has. Huge. And he hits it right up in the voided spot. Nobody was in the B gap. So that's the voided spot. And that's, so that's that's easily your miss, your first miss run fit. And I can tell you, back it up just a little bit, you can tell right there. Nobody's in that gap. So you got two people in A. One of these guys should be in this B gap. Should. That's your first miss run fit. Moving on to play two. Play two, I think this is Chubb's first first touchdown. So let's see what we got. All right, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six gaps. Six gaps. So we need six people in the box at least. One, two, three, four, five, six. Jefferson makes seven. So pre-snap, it looks like Pierce has eight. Um, this guy, I think this is Young again, has this B gap. And... I can't tell what number that is. Has this C gap? I think this is Ferguson. I think um, on this side over here, this is nine. This is Judon. He has C. Uh, Wormley I think has B. And I'm gonna say Peanut has A gap. But these two guys could switch. He could jump to A, and Peanut could have B. We'll see when the play runs. What happens? Now, this right here lets me know there is some kind of miscommunication. Cause look. We already have an open gap right here, right now. Unless it's a stunt coming. But this this urgency, this come here, lets me know that something is wrong already. So now the ball snaps, so he can't worry about it anymore. So, Pierce, uh, I think this was Pierce has his A gap. 
he obviously has B gap because he's coming to fill it now. We got C gap out here, and Tony is uh, Tony is gonna be our alley player. Tony's the alley player trying to turn this back. So Tony should take on this tight end and turn the play back inside. But now we still see this. This nobody in this A gap right here. Nobody's in that A gap. Still, nobody's in that A gap. Still, so nobody's in that A gap. So now, Chubb seeing this, stick his foot in the ground, hit it. But the thing about it is the guy that's responsible for the A-gap, Peanut, shows up late and then Chubb bounces it. Now he's trying to get in that A-gap. He shows up. He's like, okay, now I got to get out of here. Now, look at this pursuit. This pursuit. You got C-gap. If this guy blocks down, these ends are taught to squeeze. So he should be right there not allowing a cutback lane. He should be right on this tackle's butt to, to not allow a cutback lane. And he just have but, you know, being lazy on this play. And watch Chubb just runs right past his arm tackle. Who? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? So, hold on. Yeah. So, um, as I was saying, <laughs> uh, he just runs out of this tackle. Just runs out of this tackle. That's 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 piss poor tackle. First of all, it's piss poor technique because he should be right on this dude's butt. He shouldn't even he shouldn't even allow this crease right here. He should he, he should hit him right in the mouth. Bam! Right in the mouth, make the tackle. That's what should happen right there. If you're not trotting down the line, if you're not trotting, look at the gap. Look at the gap. The running back season now you can't close it. Hit him in the mouth. Should be. But because of lack of effort, jogging down the line, not tight to the tackle like you should be, you left a lane through, and you missed the tackle. Now another missed tackle. He was getting off a block, so you don't consider that one. And that was a missed tackle right there by candidate. So, again, the initial misfit, the initial misfit is this A-gap. Nobody's seeing his A-gap. He shows up late, but nobody's seeing his A-gap. If, he, if he's there now, he has to press this outside to Tony trying to turn it back. And these guys in they gap. They in their run fits. Gap, gap, outside leverage. Out, outside on free, the way it's supposed to be. He's not in his gap. Play's going away. He should be. No, he's in the gap. I'm sorry. He's in his gap. He's in, he's in the gap, but not as tight as he should be. Tony should be. No, not Tony. Peanut should be right in his gap. And he's not. So that's it's missed gap by Peanut. Bad tackling by Judon. And you get a touchdown. Lack of run fits. Next play. All right. So, nice little toss play for 17 yards. Um, this is count the gaps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because they have two tight ends. So, we now have eight gaps with the response before. How many guys we got in the box? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're going to be a gap short already because this guy, Earl, he can't possibly have a gap. We're going to be a gap short already. So in my mind, this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking whoever this is, Wormley maybe, I'm not sure, has this A gap. This linebacker here has B gap. McPhee has outside. Then I go to play side. I'm thinking Peanut has A. Uh, I think this is Pierce with B. Uh, nobody in the C gap. Uh Judon has this gap, and his outside gap is by whoever this is right here. I can't tell who this is. So right now, initially, pre-snap, there's nobody for this gap. Nobody. So let's see what happens. All right, you get down on him. Get a, a, like a little double right there. And so you got these two guys pulling. These two guys pulling. We got, keep in mind, we're already short a gap. So they got the advantage. They got the advantage. They got the numbers advantage. He tries to spill it, tries to. Not bad effort, but you got to get that guy down. If you're going to sell out, you got to get him down. Because you sell out and don't get him down, now you setting the edge doesn't matter, which is what happens. He sold out, didn't get him down. Now your edge set, there is no edge set no more. Look at all this space out here. There's no edge set anymore. Look at that. Now he's out in space with a blocker. With the blocker. And that extra block is because they had an extra man, remember? They had an extra man. Now, so, again, 
them having us not having enough guys to fit the gaps, that's what happened. That's what happened. Now this was look at this formation. You got where is it? You got direct your five regular linemen from here to here, and you got two tight ends outside. Let's go to the next play. Next play is the one we all saw at the end, and you're gonna be uh, surprised because same formation, same play. These are five linemen right here. These are two tight ends. Do we do we adjust and and get these gaps? So let's count these gaps again. I think it was eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we got eight gaps. How many guys in the box? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So again, they gonna have the advantage because they got more gaps. I mean, sorry, more blockers than we have people in those gaps. Now, remember the last time you just got 17 yards on this play. Same exact play. Same same gap open. Same gap open. You're gonna kick it down. You're gonna double team Wormley. Uh Bowser does a decent job of trying to squeeze it, but they're gonna log the crap out of him. They gonna log him. They're gonna log him. We should have a linebacker in this gap. Should. Because he should set the edge. We should have a linebacker in this gap. Tony should fill this lane. That's what should happen. Peanut should be there. Uh, Bowser should try to set the edge. And if he can't, Tony should be filling this lane right here. But look how far old Peanut is now. Peanut is out leveraging the ball. Peanut should be behind the ball. He should be behind the ball. He should be, at most, Peanut should be right here where this arrow is. And then once, once the ball carrier goes this way, he should flow the same way but stay a step behind the ball carrier. And then when he attacks the line of scrimmage, he feels it. That's what should happen. Trying to do somebody else's job. You are not the alley guy. Jefferson is. Jefferson is the alley guy. That is not you. Look, that, Tony is the alley guy. He's the edge guy. Why are you trying to be the... Do, do your own job. Do your own job. Now look at it. Now you've overplayed it. You sh when you should be right here, you're way overplaying it with this with Wormley, got, Wormley getting hooked. This tight end basically gonna gonna come back on you because you overplayed it. As soon as you turn around, now nah, look, because you overplayed it. Look at that. Hold on, I moved. I went a bit too far. Come on back here, mouse. Look at Peanut, way out of position. Peanut should be right here, right now, ready to smash that, or at least taking on this blocker. And then Tony could kind of come in. But look at Tony. Who's out here? You're anticipating the ball carrier to come out here, but you can't anticipate. So, overplay here, overplay here. Now, the rest is history, ball game. The rest is history. So, that is the lack of run fits from, from Sunday. Um, we're going to come back with another video, you know, with the, the miscommunication and on the back end. And um, make sure if this is your first time here, make sure you like uh, and subscribe. Uh, if you want to talk about what you saw or th other things that you may have saw, make sure you comment too and I'll get back with you ASAP. Uh, this is uh, Coach Evan from Sip the Tatter Films, uh, Ravens Roundup, Week 4, Part 1. We out.